That's so stupid. All right. We are episode six of Learning Out Loud. We skipped last week because... Just because... I was gone. Yeah, you were gone. Yeah, I think I was gone. But now we're here reconnected in a new location in Los Angeles. We're at Ryan's place yes. in West Covina. No, it's supposed to be a secret <laughs> location, George. <laughs> Anyways, so George, would you like to introduce us on today's topic? Yeah, so uh, today's topic is on action. It was inspired by this article I was reading. Uh, it's called The 10 Overlooked Truths of Action. And it basically just talks about and sums up how we're becoming such a culture where we're just so, we're so drawn to like reading about things and reading how to's instead of actually taking action and doing things. So we're always just like trying to consume information. So we have this huge toolbox of, um, you know, just like best, best practices, but it can be almost addicting where we're just like reading about things instead of actually doing things. And I feel like it's, it's super relevant to where I am right now as well as, you know, maybe pertains to like your life too. No, definitely a good point. Um, <clears throat> I think we talked about it yesterday and I think there's a pretty good analogy, right? Would you like to talk about the heaven one? Yeah. So in the article it writes like, uh, has an analogy where a guy is, he's at a, at the steps of heaven and up the steps leads up to heaven, and on the right, there's a stack of books that says how to get to heaven. So what's funny about that is, like, in my mind, I was already like, hey, like, I kind of want to just read, like, how to get to heaven. It's all, like, this theory of how to do it. So it's really attractive to just, like, be lost in all these ideal practices and you want to find the best formula or options to get to that place that sometimes we're so paralyzed that we're just like, uh, like, should I just do it or should I just keep on reading and absorbing information instead of just like actually doing it and being faced with constant feedback with failures and like, you know, just, I don't know. <laughs> just, yeah. That's a solid point. Well, I guess when you mentioned that article to me, I wanted to ask because I think it really pertains to your life where I think you're one to read a lot more books. And I think I've kind of strayed away from that as time has kind of gone on, maybe because I've been lazy or just too much work. But I know that reading a lot of books comes with its pros and cons. And Mm -hmm. I think one of the things I brought up was when you're reading all these books, right, it's like great knowledge to have, but it becomes very overwhelming because let's say you're put in this situation and you have this big toolkit on your belt and you're just like, okay, like which tool do I apply off the hundreds of books I've read? Right. And then you become overly whelmed and then you don't really take action and say, you're just like, okay, shit, like this theory could work, this theory could work. And then you just kind of get stuck in your head. So I guess my question to you is, do you ever feel like that has happened to you having read so many different books? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's just like, I honestly I don't read that many books, but it can almost be because you want obviously everyone wants to do well. Like I don't know, this is very general, but like um, let's use like a healthy me- uh, it's a medium that we could use. Like say you want to write a script, right? So you'll, you'll read all these books about like how to write a really good script. You'll read like 10, 15 books and everyone has all these great ideas. Everyone has their own style and every author basically thinks that they have the golden like uh like a magic bullet right Mm -hmm. and you're just like (laughs) but everyone has all these great ideas everyone has these great tips and advice it's like who do i even trust like should i use it should i mix and match it or should i just choose this one and go for it for like a week or two um but just like that whole the, the fact that there's so many different options as you were saying it's just so overwhelming that you can almost be paralyzed because you don't know which one to choose. Yeah. And as a result, you can lead to just inaction and you just don't do it. Like, how about for you? Do you, like, do you ever feel, feel this paralyzed? Or like, you seem like you're just kind of straying away from this and you're just focusing on output right now, right? I think so. I mean, I'm trying to think of it in a greater context as just book reading because it doesn't really apply to me. I mean, I'm trying to think what I usually get caught up on and I don't take action. Would it be like going to the gym or like, like, do you watch, do you ever watch like workout videos? I don't watch workout videos, but then like going to the gym has been a little bit tougher after not having gone as much as I did in the past. But it's like, I think you mentioned that as well. It's like the whole gym thing, right? It's like, okay, it's hard to take action once you like get your 
you know, butt off the seat, you know, like you get your ass to the gym. Yeah. And then it takes about 15 minutes or 10 minutes there when you're actually doing some of the weights or doing some of the cardio mm-hmm. that that motivation or adrenaline right. kicks in and you're just like, okay, shit. Yeah. Like I, now I got enough power to, you know, power through all this. So mm-hmm. it's like, you'll get the motivation to do it once you take action, which is mm-hmm. kind of weird. Yeah. Instead of just like, oh, the idea Finding of the motivation like, and then taking action based on that. Yeah, right? yeah. I think that's a really good so a, a almost, way of describing it. Like, do you feel like it's almost like you have to like <coughs> make yourself do something, like drag yourself to the gym and then find the motivation? Yeah, like, I think, I think that's like, the case for a lot of things too. Like, <coughs> it's like that for if I'm at a social event and I want to talk to people, like I can't just stand there and like, okay, who am I going to talk to? Like, what am I going to talk about? It's like, once you start talking to them, like you're going to have the awkward talks, or at least, um, at least from my end, I feel like I have anxiety for the first three minutes. But once I have like a normal conversation going, then that kind of like, let's go. And then like, it kind of free flows like from there. And then I start to take actions unconsciously without having to think about it. If that makes sense. Like you start to go on autopilot after you've initiated it. It's like the flow state, like, uh, like, you war- it's like you warmed up a little bit more. Mm, it's just yeah. like, yeah, like anything, like for sports too. Just like if you're just focused on just like performing really well without warming up or something, yeah, then you're going to be probably kind of shitty. You know, if you just try to go in sprints or just try to play full court without just warming up a little, I'm not like, I don't know if that's a good analogy, but it's just that it takes some time to find that motivation to build that kind of... um uh, momentum. Yeah. Well, it's like the fire. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I think it applies to anything. Like if you use a fire analogy, like it takes a little bit, it always, the fire kindles a little bit, then it grows big. Like, it doesn't just immediately just get super huge in the beginning. Mm-hmm. But throwing this into application, how do you, why do you think you can't, you don't take as much action as you would like to? I don't know. Action is so scary because it's so immediate. It's like you get a lot of feedback. I mean, like failure. Mm-hmm. That's the most immediate thing. Like, yeah. Um, I think one of the things it says is like action keeps you humble because it's, it's like you get a reaction immediately. It's just like, Hey, like, um, for example, if you, if you go ask out a girl, right. And you, (laughs) she rejects you. That's like very fast. Mm. So in one way, it's better to look at, you know, you want to read all, like watch all these videos, like how to talk to girls. Like that to me, like if, off the bat of my mind, it's like, that's just very intriguing. It's like more comfortable because yeah. it's just like yeah, more of a how to. And you're like, mm, maybe if I just apply this in my day to day life, it's going to work perfectly. But it's like, do you really want to apply that knowledge and get like immediate feedback that maybe you're not as good as you thought you were? Yeah. So that's like really scary too because it's comfortable to be reading about things and being soaked in a bath of knowledge instead of like putting yourself out there and uh, testing your skills and testing your true ability because it's, it's reality. You know, taking yeah. action is real. It's very immediate. Like, do you ever felt like, have you ever, what are some times in your life where you've, you know, just like, are there times where you've avoided things because the actual action of things was scarier than, to scary to face the, the results of it? I think so. But before I get there, I think sure. I just want to touch on your point again. I think it's very true that uh, you get kind of encapsulated in this romanticized fantasy that the idea of like talking to a girl after watching all these videos, like you think you're the boss and then like <laughs> not having to do it, like you're never going to get challenged. So you li- you're constantly living in this fantasy world. So you're just constantly being. Yeah. yeah you're like, if I were in this hypothetical yeah. place, this is what I would say. This is what she'd say. And then she'd be like, yeah. <laughs> like you don't ever have to question it. Like you're stuck in this like nice little bubble. And then at the same time, I think it develops like a lot of this false confidence that people have as well. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, oh, you know, I have all these tools. Like I'm so knowledgeable. But like, you know, I choose not to do that because like I don't need to because I already know how it's going to pan out. And then yeah. like you start. And you get this like really stupid circle where you're like overly confident in yourself, and it's based on this false kind of yeah false pretense. Uh huh. Yeah, I think that's what's that's how I would summarize what you were saying. I was like, that's how that's I so yeah. true. Yeah, and I think. I mean, I guess what was your question to me? You said like, have you ever been like? Has that basically ever happened to you? Where you, it's like you almost, almost grow like a sense of entitlement because. You're just like, you know all these things, you played out all these scenarios in your head, and you just, as a result, you just don't do it because of that. I think the most common things would probably be like, when I was single, I would like hit on girls, and I think a lot of that 
I think that's the most like common like application for guys is like they'll like hear like from their bro friends or like watch videos or whatever it is and think, oh like I don't need to talk to them. Like you always play out this like elaborate situation. Like okay, if I say this, this is it going to happen? And, like blah, blah 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 blah, and then we'll go on a date. Like all this like <laughs> bullshit that like no, and never going to happen <laughs> without you saying even hi. Like and it's like I think that's probably like happens to me the most where I don't take action, or I don't take action in the mind plays tricks on you. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, what is, what's the other one? I guess like work when I'm like making phone calls. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I don't need to call this person. I don't think he's interested. This person's going to say no. Yeah, this person's going <laughs> to say no. And then like, you don't call me. Like, okay, let's go to the easier one. Like, oh, he's just a manager. I can talk to him. That happens to me a lot too. I, so those, I think those are two applications where it's, yeah. it's a matter of fear and I don't yeah. want to get rejected. And what else? I think, I think that's the main thing. I mean, besides being fearful and laziness, I think those are kind of the two big things that yeah. stops people from wanting to take action. Yeah. I feel like procrastination and laziness is like a... No, I feel that. Like I've I heard someone say that it's like the highest level of... Like laziness is the highest level of procrastination. Mm. Like it's just like you don't want to take action. It's like because... Like, I don't I forgot what I was trying to get at, but it says that, like, inaction makes you, is very slow, you know? Mm-hmm. As in, like, it builds and you don't really see yourself. Like, <clears throat> the rejection isn't fast and sharp, just like action is. So, inaction, like, you start to build, like, this. Um, so, like, just doing one thing sometimes is not enough. It's like you gotta take a couple actions, then you'll see some sort of result, then, or? No, what I mean is, like, the fact, the, if you get in this mode of constant inaction, for example, like not going to the gym, right? Mm. So you're starting to build, like you become really soft, but you don't see it really immediately because mm. it's like you getting really fat. It's like you eat more and more, but you don't see it right away. Mm. But it's after time, it gets like really bad, but you don't really realize it. Yeah. So the same way with inaction is like you don't go to the gym for one day, nothing happens. Two days, nothing happens, you know? But slowly over time, you become really soft and you become really lazy and you don't really feel it because it's just like a slowly creeping up on you. No, that makes sense. You become the soft little biatch. Is that what you are or is that what I am? Um, rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Shoot. I won rock, that paper, one. Rock, paper, scissors. For the viewers that can't see, I won that one. You didn't win. That's why I said <laughs> it again. All right. Well, I think... Hmm. In terms of... Action. What would you like to do differently now that we've talked about this? I don't know. The article talks about like having a week where you're just not consuming information. Uh, just like, because, again, like, just think of all the, I don't, for me, like all the free time I have, I'm just like trying to listen to podcasts, trying to read books and stuff like that. Uh, but it focuses on, he's like, hey, just do an entire week where all you're doing is focus, focusing on output. Like, you're not worrying about like reading. Uh, another book on how to have more grit or something like that. It's just like, just do, just do, just do, just do, and you'll actually figure out that you just you can accomplish a lot because you're not in this mode of just consuming information, hoarding these, this, as you are saying, uh, a toolkit or a tool belt of knowledge, mm-hmm. you know. So you're going to try for this next week after July 4th? You're going to... Start, I think starting now. Like, you always honestly, say starting now. Starting <laughs> now. Do something. Honestly, like... Oh, wait, let me give you the prime example. Okay, I just didn't want to go eat. Like, <laughs> Sorry, if Emily's friend, Helen. <laughs> so I didn't want to go out and just, like, meet new people. What? Is that why? Honestly, it's just, like, to me, it's, like, comfortable to just stay at home, you know? But you're only eating lunch, and then afterwards... I know, I just don't home. want to, but it's just, like... That to me is just like a comfortable, safe space to be just at home, laying on the couch, not doing anything. I just want to relax, you know? Interesting. But honestly, like, it's one of those, it's just those times where, have you like, have you ever just... Well, that's also taking act. Okay, go ahead. That's taking non-action to, like... You're taking an action by deciding... Well, I guess maybe that's making a decision, not taking an action. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're solving another but it's problem. But like, it's, <laughs> like, it's, like, it's like when your friends are like, hey, let's go out. And you're just like, no, nah, I just want to grab my at home. But like, so remember the, some of those nights where you do decide to go now, and it's like really, really fun. Mm. But you would have never, ever done that if you didn't pull yourself out. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like, same thing. Just 
pull yourself out of that comfortable space that you have. Yeah. I mean, we could go off like on a completely different tangent of just making yourself do stuff that you don't want to do, and because you're pleasantly, you'll be pleasantly surprised. But um, going back to you, what are some actions that you want to take this coming day or week to come, or what are you going to focus on? Yeah. Well, I was thinking about it, but I think in my head I was confusing decision making with taking action. I think those are a little bit too different. Like, I was thinking, like, a bit of, like, decision-making, not in the sense of YOLO, but it's, like, if a friend said, hey, let's go out, or, like, let's go get drinks right now, I'll be like, yeah, fuck yeah. Like, I won't have any hesitation. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that's really action-taking. I think that's more so decision-making. But I feel like their decision, like, leads to the action. Like, I mean, but you can also make an action to make a decision, right? You can make action to make a decision. You can? When well, you're making so. action to, I mean, because like a decision is an action of something. Like you're making. I'm deciding to do this, so I go do it. Yeah, I guess so. I guess it's, yeah. I guess so it's motivation is. and decision and action. What was it again? Motivation and decision and action. Wait, so you're saying there has to be like an internal thing? So you're saying that's a progression of steps yeah. that happens in your but mind? But like so? what this article is talking about is you first, you you have a small decision and yeah. you take the decision like action and then you find the motivation. So it's reversing it. Yeah. Because the normal process is like, let me muster up the motivation, mm-hmm. get enough of it, all right, make a decision, do it, and then you go do it. True. I think the, I mean, the motivation goes both ways. You can go after the decision or yeah. action that has happened, or it can also start from before. And I think that's also why sometimes you don't take action. Yeah, because it's like, yeah. You don't feel motivated to go you do this. You psych yourself out. I guess, yeah, you psych yourself out. You're, you're really, you truly don't want it enough. That's why you're not doing anything about it. Yeah. And I think going back to like the girl example back then, like I really wanted to meet new girls. So like I would... It would be really, really awkward. I, I know, like, I'd pan out shit, but, like, I would still do it at the end of the day. I'd be like, yeah. fuck it. Like, better done than not done. That's good mentality. Yeah, no regrets, right? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you'll get, like, I haven't gotten slapped, but, like, you just, like, get rejected multiple yeah, times. Like, like, you go zero <laughs> for six for a night, and you're just like, well, fuck. Zero for six. <laughs> no, it's so true. Um, but, like, you built enough motivation yeah. to go and do it. That's, like, incredible. That's true. Well, I mean, going back to the actions, like for me, like I guess talking to girls or like doing well at work or making those call, most <clears throat> making those calls, my motivation is like more intrinsic. Where I want to better myself, and to better myself, I need to put myself in uncomfortable situations. So therefore, even though I don't want to do this action, I will do it because it goes around my internal motivation of who I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, yeah. So, I, but it, I can also like use the example earlier that when you go to the gym, it takes like some time to kick in, and then like. You'll get the motivation yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. Just dragging yourself to that spot that you need to be. Mm-hmm. And I guess... Oh, wait, go ahead. No, sorry, you. Uh, I was going to... We want to try to keep this one a little bit shorter. So yeah. to close it, I think you mentioned... So what was your action step and I'll name my action step? My action step is just very basic. It's just uh, get to the place I need to be before actually having to do whatever I got to do and just not thinking too much. That sounds a little bit too broad, George. You got to tell me like a direct action on uh, so, Like for the next, in the next, week. I'm going to drag myself upstairs, put on some clothes, put on a nice smile. <laughs> so then, no, not the nice smile part, but just not overthinking things and just taking massive action. I know that's very broad in general. I'm going to have to hash out the details uh, in a second after we end this podcast, but it's just kind of a more of a direction I want to head towards. Mm-hmm. Like, no, it's just, I was, remember I was telling you before we started this podcast, it was like, it's just ironic sometimes how we're talking about, like a podcast is about like talking about things that we're going to do. Well, we've done it though. Like we did the gratitude. One. Yeah, we did a couple of those things, but like. Well, this, it took action to do a podcast. This is uh, our sixth one. So we're kind of almost close to zero for six too. <laughs> As in zero to six. True, true viewers. Within all these episodes, whatever yeah. the fuck it is. But, yeah, that makes sense, though. But, I mean, I'm still pretty proud. I mean, taking action kind of reflects us doing this. Just come here, right? Uh, maybe yeah. later. All right, all right. But what about you? What's, what are you going to do moving forward? I think it's going back to a bigger thing right now. It's like I've been very content and very lazy, and that's very unlike myself. Mm. Really? Like being in LA is just like I mean not just this but like this kind of reinforces like damn this is kind of nice like living this simple life where like I'm just chilling at home eating good food chilling with friends and like that's my day like 
that seems really nice instead of like, okay, I'm going to go to work and like grind my ass off. Like I wanted to have that after I switched my job, but instead I got a little soft, a little flaccid. Uh, with this, <laughs> a little uh, limp. Yeah, a little wimp with this new lifestyle. So it's like, how do I get back on that horse of wanting to grind really hard? So I think it, I, I need to dig deeper. For me, it's like... We can get some tips from Emily about how to do that. <laughs> Emily, how do you do that? How do you grind really hard? <laughs> <laughs> but let's quickly end this one but yeah I think for me it's like a deeper internal issue of finding what motivates me as a person and I think with it means what do I really want 5-10 years from now and how do I work towards that what do you want 5 years 10 years from now Ryan I really don't know yet George that's a good topic for the next podcast our future I mean you'll be listening to this podcast 5-10 years from now I mean 5-10 years later we're in episode 5 to 110 we're not being very consistent with this podcast recently. I so think we're I don't not know bad. It's been like 10 weeks. We've done it like six times. Right. 60%. I guess we Asian failed that one pretty D-. hard. All right, so at least we didn't flunk it. All right. Well, enough of this rambling. Thanks again for everyone for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Um, we're going to have to work on some more quality content soon. <laughs> not too sure that this is the best. <laughs> but uh, Don't discount it like that. But true. thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Ta-ta.